And welcome to another video. And today we're going to be doing the full teardown for the ExtraFi M42 wireless. You get to see on this one how the weight adjustment works. You'll also get to see how this thing's built and whether you should be picking it up yourself or just if you're interested in how it's all put together, then this is the video to watch. Now, these were done on Twitch. I do these straight away when they come out. I do them live so you can see them there and then. And then they come down to YouTube to be edited for this type of video. So if you want to catch me, don't forget to follow me on Twitch, Betty Bob. And I've also done a rear panel view to see what the different rear panels are like. I've also done a first impressions and there'll be a weight reduction, which is pretty nuts on this one. That'll be coming out just after this, so check them out. So let's go on with the video. So it's time to take apart the M42 wireless. You get a white and a black version. I prefer the white version. Which version do you prefer? That's the question. Stock weight. 66 grams. Oh, 67 just the white version is a little bit heavier as expected because of the coloring so as you can see about a gram heavier it's like a mice of many stickers and it sticker 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 it's got nice feet oh there's the first fail screws under the first front skate oh no They are slightly uh, rounded as well. You're going to be able to tell. Slightly rounded. They've dropped some nice skates on this though. So we're definitely get some weight reduction. You got one screw, one screw, one screw, one screw, all under the skates. And obviously you got another three for the rear panel. And then you got two more skates for the weight, like damn. Let's take the labels off first. Let's see if the weight reduced underneath, I reckon they have. Kind of. Left they have done it because the scroll wheel's there, so they've left that bit of reinforcement. Which I don't hate. I kind of agree with that. So we say four screws, which look a bit of a shame under the feet, but kind of get why. These ones here will mean you'll be able to adjust the pre-travel maybe a bit more. Pretty normal screw. This is a stock rear panel. This is the foreground, this is slightly heavier, the stock one. So I thought we could split this in half, but you can't. That looks, it looks like it's a similar setup. We can drop the front buttons off. So they've kind of built it the same as the M42 and the same as the other, uh, sorry, the wide M42 and the same as the M4. This is similar, if you remember. Look at more of a transparent extra fine now, I'm out of black. Or has been on the wired ones. You get to see the side button set up now, how it's so good, because look how close they are. Got a bit of pre-travel. There's plenty of travel by looks right. 
Very good. That's what it looks like at the minute. This is put together pretty well, to be fair. Extra fire, definitely stepping it up. Good build quality. Now, what is unusual is, well, I can't remember from the M4, it looks like it's got a one piece shell. It must actually still split from the base, I think. There we go. There's a clip. See it. Go. Right, let's take these sides out and see what we got. I'm liking this side button set up. I just found I made this pretty nice. This is one of the best ones I've seen. So there's two clips here to take out. Oh, she's using micros. Right, okay. Gave the game away, but. Here's the sides, nice little setup. It's a quite a different setup of uh, mouse buttons as well. Eh? The micro switches, which disappoints me, but they actually felt okay. So, you know what, for a change, these ones don't feel bad for these little micro switches. They're a good button setup which again shows it's key when you have a good button setup you can make a switch feel good even the little micro ones can't make an lax one feel good they always feel like shit on these ones here you can see the soldered here on the actual rear the G Pro ones are soldered on each side here, so they have different different pin setups for different micro switches. These ones have two posts, whereas the G Pros have two flats. So they've even got different like soldering points for the micro switches. So it's not as easy as buying a pair and they'll fit. see the rear there soldered here these are well they're not even branded oh, there they are Hirano you can just read it these actually feel pretty good in this but in this mouse you might feel I'd say probably some of the best side buttons I felt let's take off there DPI. Two clips either side is DPI. That's tougher to get out of the thumb. This is where we're at. Pretty heavy main. I guess not too bad actually, but this is what this looks like. See, so it's using KL8s already. Got a bit of a beast to a battery. Using a KL encoder. Another micro side. What a different one. It's just, I just don't get it. Use another Hawaiian, but why? Ooh, that not feel as nice. It's a DPI button. Why don't you have the same? Why not the same switch, man? Why change the switch? It's cheaper, maybe. It's like you can tell the difference in this. Listen to the sound difference. Hmm. 
This white one definitely feels better. You can see this one's got the actual similar mounting points to the G Pro super light ones. As these ones mount underneath, so probably why they didn't do it, but still. It's a bit weird. What we have is the uh, weight mod again, which they did on the M4, which I just don't rate. So you can unscrew this, which unscrews basically this mount here, which is why they have this massive cage on it. Get under these, and then you can now adjust your balance point. Not stop this battery in as much as last time. It's quite a thick. It's 3370, so it's got a 500 million battery in it because the 3370 is so inefficient. It's the adhesive they're using. This this battery cage thing, they, I mean, because they use it as a weight mod, I guess, but this is so retro. She's like Logitech were using this like 10 years ago, so it's a bit of a shame. But I guess they're trying to do the weight reduce, like the weight balancing. Maybe people like it, maybe people won't. It looks like at the minute. This is different. Um, this setup's different, kind of levitates. They've cut the RGB on this one, mate. That's one of the things they've definitely done. So on the M42 and the uh, wide one, it had a massive diffuser on the front. We took it out. Um, let me get my M42 one, sorry. M42 wide one was a wide one, now modded wireless one. Um, so the skate slightly changed, but can you see that front diffuser gap here? Look at it. It's like a big guppy compared to this one now. That's because that had a front diffuser in it. Bit of a weird right on the edge of the PCB there for the antenna. Nice. Two screws on it. I mean, they've been thinking about the weight, but then they put like dual screws. Like, I guess it's for the DPI, but you know. Five different sets of screw, like types of screw in this. Manufacturing must be expensive. Um, nice pin up. Put RGB. So you got two screws, one here under the scroll wheel. Can you see that? It's quite a long PCB, man. Trying not to break this. So I thought this was causing me a problem yeah. in terms of like, oh, there's a, yeah, okay. So I thought it was being pinned down by the diffuser, but you can see there's actually a screw under the diffuser. Sneaky, sneaky. You can see it's uh, clipped. You will not defeat Bob. I will always get into bits. In all fairness, they probably put it there because when you mess around with this switch, um, you'll probably push it up, so it's probably just keeping it pinned, but I don't see the point in that one then. You might just have one front and one back and that'd be enough.
So a total of 16 screws. It's quite a lot. Power button though, or whatever it is, power button slash DPI setting button. It's quite a long PCB. I thought about taking weight out of it though, which is clever. So they took some weight out of it, you can see they took it out. A lot of traces on this, you can see, like, especially on the middle. It's quite a busy board. Little LAX switch on the bottom for the DPI. Pretty normal, really. USB C, quite a nice PCB. You've got the KL8s and the Hawanu black shell blue dot. It's got a little spacer under it. So this, this white bit basically. Can you focus, can't tell. This white bit is a spacer, pushes it up slightly to give that a little extra height. You see against the um, the KL8s are like a, a little bit taller for the scroll. So that's quite a long PCB though, 96mm. 35.8mm, yeah. Fairly heavy PCB, but 10mm. Scroll wheel has any benefits in terms of design? No, but it's annoying as hell because it has split rubber. I just don't get it. I don't get this design. Is a two gram scroll wheel because it's extra plastic they got to have for the two piece um two piece rubber it's just weird DPI button and then the diffuser the light for the profile. Actually two bits of this normally. And then finally, the base. I mean, that's quite a lot of plastic in there. Nicely weight reduced, took as much weight out as they can, kept it solid. Fairly thick. 10 grams. There you go.